Organic chemistry, guys, is the study of something in carbon compounds. What is that something? Oxygen. Nope. There is oxygen sometimes in there. Hydrogen. Hydrogen. That's the big one, guys. Remember, we've heard this term already several times, and I don't know what I'm writing. because. Hydropant. What? Hydrogen. I was writing hydrocarbons because that's what I was about to say. We've heard that term hydrocarbon many times. It's where it's just carbon and hydrogen in there. Now, really the only elements or the big, big ones that come out in organic chemistry, guys, hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen are in there sometimes, oxygen are in there sometimes, and then your halides. What are the halides, do you think? Group 17, all right? Um, so fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, those are your halides. They're the halogens. In organic chemistry, we call them halides. Compounds that contain carbon are considered organic due to how many valence electrons does carbon have? Four. Four makes it very unique. All right? Is it it's halfway between to eight? Is it going to give them? Is it going to share them? Guys, carbon is the best sharer on the periodic table. It's always forming bonds. Um, they are able to have four covalent bonds um, with itself as well as other elements. Now, those bonds could include double and triple bonds, okay? but it can share four different sets of electrons. So most organic compounds, guys, they have a tetrahedral shape. We haven't talked about shapes in a while. We're going to go back and review that over the next couple of weeks. All right? But it's got that four. Okay? Um, you will see it written with stick figures a lot of times, and we'll show you that as we go through. Raw materials for organic compounds, they come from petroleum products. What's petroleum? Oil, right? Petroleum oil, and then fossil fuels, guys. Now, we use organic molecules in everything. Okay, We're made of organic molecules. Medicines that you take are all organic molecules. Right? But a lot of things are derived from petroleum. It's where we get a lot of that from, and then we undergo a series of reactions to get whatever it is that you're trying to make, whatever kind of medicine or whatever it is. All right, so they are natural within it. So organic compounds, they are nonpolar. What does nonpolar mean? Yes, usually they're symmetrical. They have no pulse. There's no positive and negative end. Um, they're just equally sharing all of their pieces. So that means, guys, they're going to be sol uh, soluble in nonpolar solvents. Now, we haven't talked about dissolvability in a long time. We briefly mentioned it back when we did bonding. So the phrase you need to remember, guys, when it comes to solubility and taking a solute into a solvent is likes, dissolve, likes. Okay? Nope, not attract. That's not what I said. Opposites will. So charges, positive negative charges, they attract. Likes will repel there. But in terms of solvents... And solutes, likes dissolve likes. That means that nonpolar solvents will dissolve nonpolar solutes. Polar solvents will dissolve polar solutes. Guys, what's the number one solvent we've used all year long? Water. Okay? We've used water all year long. That's worked because we've had a mostly ionic compounds, salts that we've used. Sodium chloride, copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate. Okay? They dissolve with water. But if we were to use organic molecules, we'd have to use something like hexane or ethane or ethanol. Our phenolphthalein that we use, I actually had to dissolve that in a ratio of mostly ethanol to get that to dissolve. Okay. They are insoluble in um, water, which is going to be nonpolar. If they don't conduct electrical current, what does that mean they are? Non -current. Or what's the term we use in solutions? Non-electrolytes. Non-electrolytes. So organic compounds, guys, they tend to have high melting points. The greater number of carbons, the higher the uh, melting point is going to be. Now, it doesn't mean every organic compound has a high melting point because we did one um, 
one lab where we used some, well, we used covalent compounds. doesn't mean they were necessarily or, truly organic. Um, but we had the ones, remember the guys that made the room smell really awesome? The Not the cabbage. Before that, back in the fall. The moth, the moth balls, right? Moth yeah, that was awful. My room smelled like that for weeks. I love that. All right? They melted really quickly. So the longer the chain, the higher the melting point. So it's a scale just like you know anything else in terms of melting point. Um, they are very, very slow reactions. When I was in uh, college and I had my organic lab, it was a four-hour long lab. I can remember one lab particularly where it went longer than four hours because those reactions are very, very slowly. When I was in grad school, the labs down the hall from the lab that I worked in, they would reflux their reactions, which just means they're letting them, you know, they're spinning them, they're heating them. They would go 20 hours or 48 hours in reflux, where they would just let it react because you get these really long, huge chain molecules that not only need enough energy to get the reaction going, but they also have the, have the right orientation. And the longer, guys, the bigger a molecule is, the harder it is to get that right um, orientation for them to react. So they have very high activation energies. Well, the original plan was to work in a lab, and then I was like, nope, that's so boring. So then I, it changed to teaching. And then I came here, and I'm like, uh, let's go the other. No, we'll see. And I'm seeing in college, though, in college you have to, like, do research and stuff and write grants, and I'm like, I don't want to do that. You're always, you're always teaching us how to be ready for college. Yeah. No, that's... I know. For Northerners. Go to the most prestigious like, college in this county. GCC, the GCC only GCC one in this county. <laughs> Prefixes for naming organic compounds, guys. They are found on table P. P. Table P. And it looks like this. So meth, eth, pro, bute, pent, hex, hept, oct, non, dec. One through ten. You do not have to memorize them. They are right there on table P. So one carbon, guys, is going to have meth for its prefix. Four carbons would have butte. Seven would have hept. We will use these over the next week or so, and you will have to be able to name semi-simple structures. Now, this is one thing, guys. You don't have to have flashcards to memorize alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes, which we're going to talk about here in a little bit. But you need to know these two terms, what a saturated compound is versus an unsaturated compound. So a highlighter would be a great tool right now or have some way to remember those. I would encourage you guys, yeah, get, grab one if you need it. Feel free. Guys, what does saturated mean? We've talked, it's full, okay? It's at capacity. So in terms of an organic compound, it means you have all single bonds between your carbons, okay? All single bonds between the carbons. That means that all the bonds are full. It means carbon can't take in anything else to bond with it. So it can't hold any more elements. Alkanes are saturated. They're the only ones that are going to be saturated. Now, unsaturated, that means obviously there's room to take in other elements. So if they have a double or a triple bond between carbons, they can take in other elements, meaning you can break those double or triple bonds and you can add other things like hydrogen or any of your halogens like bromine or chlorine or fluorine or iodine. You could add those in there. Alkenes and alkynes are unsaturated. So really, if you can remember that the only one that is um, saturated is alkane, the other two are then unsaturated. So we will talk about all of these terms here. Um, we're going to go over alkanes today, and then we will talk about the other So groups of organic compounds. There are different ones that we're going to discuss. Um, a homologous series, guys, is just a group of related ones. So hydrocarbons, again, what do they make up? Um, hydrogen. <laughs> hydrogen and carbon. carbon. Okay. <clears throat> Table Q. Table Q is what you want to look at. It's in your notes. It's also obviously in your reference pack, guys. Here you go. You've got alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. They show you a general formula. You don't have to memorize this. CnH2n plus 2 is the formula we will use to calculate 
Um, the molecular formula for an alkane from its name, alkenes, it differs slightly. It's CnH2n, and alkynes, it's CnH2n minus 2. So you've got to look at the name of the compound. That's going to help you figure out the molecular formula. Once you figure out the molecular formula, then you can figure out the structural formula. So you've got examples right here. Ethane, notice how it's saturated because there's no double or triple bonds. Ethene, it's got a double bond right here between the carbons. You could fit in two other elements, okay? And then uh, ethine, you could fit in four other ones um, to add those in there, right? And that's what organic reactions are doing. So let's talk about alkanes first. So our series formula, generic one, is CnH2n plus 2. Single bonds, and they are saturated. So methane, what's that prefix meth? How many carbons does that mean? One. So we have C1. Now let's plug that into our formula. N, guys, take a note here. It even says it in your reference packet. N is the number of carbon atoms. So whatever number of carbon atoms you have, that's what you're going to plug into where you see N in your formula. So now we're at H. To figure out the number of H's, it's 2N plus 2. So what's 2 times 1? One. 1. One, it's two plus two is, so there's our fun day that I'm recording too, right? To live on, you know, the internet forever. And why did I have to, why did I have to mention it with this class that I was recording? Yeah, I don't either. I paused it like three times. So, here's our molecular formula, guys. If you're asked, if you're given a name and you're asked to draw the formula, like you were on that practice regions exam, that you guys just skipped and we just counted it wrong because we haven't done it yet. Get the molecular formula first, then get the structural formula. So now just put those in there. So we've got carbon and we've got four hydrogens. We're just going to connect it to it. Now, there's a couple different ways that you could see organic equations written. We could have all the H's around it, or you could have it like this, where just the lines. If you are given it, guys, with just the lines, you are going to assume that hydrogen is at the end of those. Okay? With this, that's what it is. This is a shorthand way, so you don't have to write in every single hydrogen, because you're going to have a lot of hydrogens in your formulas. Write them in. Okay, write them in. Propane, what's our prefix? Pro, which means how many carbons? Three. So we've got three carbons. Now three times two is? Six plus two is? C3H8. So now string your carbons together first and then put in your hydrogens. Okay, and you've got to use every piece that you have in your formula, just like other structures and things that we've drawn all year. This is like geometry. Okay. Go ahead and do pentane and heptane. When you branch off of um, off a long chain, it's called an alkyl group. Okay. An alkane that is minus a hydrogen so it can attach to a longer chain. Now that's one type of branch chain that we're going to talk about. So if you take a look here, guys, on the next page in your notes at the top, all right, methane becomes methyl, CH3. That allows for this methyl group, this basically methane, this one carbon piece to branch off and be attached to a carbon. So we can have three hydrogens around it instead of four. Ethane becomes ethyl, all right, C2H5. So you still look at the same formula as what the alkane would be, but you subtract out one hydrogen that constitutes for the bond that attaches to a long carbon chain. So when we name complex hydrocarbons, that's one thing we're going to practice today and all week. Remember, our quiz is going to be on Thursday. So we're trying to get through, guys, all of our notes today and tomorrow, so we will tie-dye on Wednesday. We're going to do that with our double period, so we're going to do it in the first period. We'll see how long it goes, um, and then we'll come back from it. And, um, so, naming a hydro, uh, a complex one, guys, you got to look for the longest chain, okay? So basically, count up and see what's going to be your longest chain. Name your longest chain first. Then, look and see what's hanging off of it and name the piece that's hanging off. 
Then identify the number of the carbon that the group is hanging off of. So that's a lot I just threw at you. Let's go through and do some practice. Now, what you're going to have to do with these ones, because the lines aren't in there, draw lines to connect them to show the bonds. So I'm going to color coordinate it. If you want to get a color to help you see this, I encourage you guys to get up and grab a colored pencil or a highlighter right now. It may make it a little bit easier because this is something, again, brand new that you've never seen before. We've got to count up our longest chain first, all right, of carbon. So let's take a look. This is one, two, three. Is that my longest chain? Well, what if I went like this? One, two, and I went down here, three. Which What's the longest? Three. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Either way you go, in this case, you have three as your longest chain. How would we name an alkane with three carbons? Yeah, it would be called propane. Okay, because it's got that prefix prop for its three. So I'm going to circle that. There's my longest chain. Now, we've got a chain branching off of that long chain. That's this guy right here. How many carbons are in that branch? One. Now, this is what we were saying, guys, where um, when you have a group hanging off of your main chain, that's an alkyl group. Okay, it's an alkyl. So, meth, methane becomes what? Methyl. Okay, so we're going to name that piece methyl. The last step, guys, is to identify the number. So, it's not just saying methyl propane, we've got to identify the number carbon that the methyl group is hanging off of. So count them up, assign numbers. It doesn't matter if I go from left to right. In this one, it doesn't, because if I went one, two, three, or if I went one, two, three this way, it's still the same number, right? Now we'll get to another one where it may not be the same, where it will matter, okay? We'll talk about that in a second. So our number here is gonna be 2-methylpropane. That's the name of this compound, 2-methylpropane. So the name of the game here with organic on your exam, guys, is use your reference packet to help you. Okay, This again, organic chemistry gets super complex very quickly. So it should be simple, um, L or simple compounds that you'll have to name or draw, and then identifying functional groups. That's our, the name of the game this week for you. These last two guys in the box right here, these ones are interesting. Do they have the same number of atoms? What would be the chemical formula of the one on the left? If we added them all up, what would be the... Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. And how many hydrogens? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six, 13. What about the one on the right? It's the same. If you go through and count them up, guys, it's the same. So they have the same formula, but are their structures exactly the same? No, what are they? What have, what's happened here, basically? It's flipped. They're really called mirror images of each other. All right, we'll talk about what that term is here toward the end of the day. It's called an isomer. We'll define it a little bit later on. But guys, they have the same formula but different structures. Now, this is one where let's go through find your longest chain. What, how many carbons do I have in my longest chain? Five, which is what? What's that prefix? Pentane. Okay. And I've got one hanging off, which is going to be called methyl. Now, does it matter the way that I start counting to identify where that methyl group is here? Absolutely. Okay. What's that? You got to do the same for both of them. But it matters, guys. You want to count with a side that has the least number, okay? So where it's going to be the least number of carbons to get to that group. So one, two. This is what we would start from the left side here because it is um, the shorter route. So we would call this 2-methylpentane, okay? 2-methylpentane. We would call the one on the right the same thing. The same thing because we would start from here. Even though it was drawn a little bit differently, we would still want to call it 2-methylpentane okay? because it's still the shorter way. Now, if we define it saying that it's an isomer of it, we could move that methyl group around to any of the carbons and we would just name it from there. So if we started, like Hunter said, on that same left side, then this would be what? 4-methylpentane. Okay? 
That would be 4-methylpentane. So it depends on what the question's asking you. When you're asked to draw the structural formula, guys, always start with your longest chain first, then worry about the groups hanging off of it. Draw your long chain, wait on your hydrogens until the end, because they're going to fill it out. Now, 2-methyl. Methyl means how many carbons? One. So two, does it matter which end I start from? Counting two? No, it doesn't matter. Which side do we want, left or right? Left, okay. So one, two, now I'm going to draw off my methyl. Do you think it matters, guys, if I draw it like this or like this? No, it doesn't matter, okay? At this level, it doesn't matter. Now just fill it in with your hydrogens all around your carbons. And again, you can write in H's or you can just draw the lines and it's assumed that there are H's hanging off of them. Family, we're going to talk about alkenes are very similar, but now they have a double bond. So that ending, guys, that suffix en means that you have a double bond somewhere in that structure. Okay. Now, when you have a double or triple bond, that means it's unsaturated. Remember, saturated means full. Alkanes are the only ones that are saturated. Okay, because they have every single bond is full. They can't add anything else in there. But alkenes, and we're going to talk about alkynes today as well, they are unsaturated. So the number before the compound name tells the location of the double bond. So now with these, the first number, guys, tells us where the double bond is located, what carbon it's located on. That's the key here that you've got to remember. So let's take a look. Ethene. What's the molecular formula for ethene? If you look on your reference packet, it gives it to you. C is how many? I'm sorry, F means two. Okay. H then? Right, because our formula here, guys, for alkenes is CnH2n, okay? So, <clears throat> we got to draw our structural formula. So, we only have two carbons. Is there really any, is there multiple ways for the uh, um, double bond to be? No, it can only be between the two carbons. So, like this, and then your H's would be... Like this. Now, why? This is a kind of a review question, guys. Why did I draw my H's at an angle like that? Right. Remember, so this is going back to Vesper, guys. It's been a while since we've done that. These are being repelled because of all the electrons here in that double bond. All right, so it changes up the structure, the geometry of your molecule. I want you guys to try propene. It's important to note, they don't have a number out there, right? Because there's really only one possibility. Remember, with the numbers, it's the shortest side. Okay, the number tells you which the shortest side is. Well, with ethene, there's only one possibility of where the double bond can go, so therefore you don't need to have a number. With propene, same thing, because if I put it here, all right, we could call it one propene, but either way you write it, it's still one propene because it's on the first carbon. So it doesn't matter where you put that double bond, it's just flipping it around. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Once you get the double bond in there, then you will add in your um, other uh, hydrogens. So if we take a look, one, two, three, four, five, and then six. Now, would ours really be drawn out like this, guys? Would that be the geometry like I wrote it? If we were getting specific, which it's not going to matter for you guys for the Regents exam, okay, this one, the double bond, then would be bent away because of those electrons. But for you, it doesn't matter. So don't worry or get too hung up on um, how you draw it. Just make sure where you have a double bond on the end, put your hydrogens going away. That's the big thing to remember there. Okay. Now, the next one that we get is butene. So let's talk about it. It says 2-butene. Well, now with the number, it does matter where you put your double bond. Bute means how many? So C4H8 is going to be our molecular formula. So we need four carbons. So we have multiple possibilities, guys, of where we could do that. Because we could put it here. What would that be? That would be what carbon is my double bond on? One. one, the first one. But that's not what we want here. So if I put it on either end, it's one butene. But two, we've got to count to the second carbon. One, two, then we're going to put our double bond. Now fill in all your hydrogens. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. 
Do you think it matters that I alternated where my hydrogens went right here? No, guys. For you, it doesn't matter. You could have them on the same side. It's not going to matter for us. You're not going to get that um, specific with it. What's the, do I have? Oh, yeah, because what's the maximum number of bonds that you can have in a carbon, guys? Why four? Who said four? But why? How many valence electrons does carbon have? Four. You can't have more than four bonds on any carbon. If you have more than that, it's called a Texas carbon in the world of organic chemistry because they're bigger than what they can be. Everything's bigger in Texas, all right? Um, guys, you can't have it. I made that mistake right here, just filling in blindly. Like Tony said, I have 11 hydrogens because this guy right here, if you count it up, one, two, three, four, five. You can't have that. So you've got to go slow when you're filling those in. Don't just fill in blindly like I did. Now we're going to talk about alkynes. So guys, now an alkyne has a triple bond. It's still unsaturated. Note the formula. CN, H2N, minus 2. So they're all very similar. You don't have to memorize the formulas. Remember, they are on table Q. Table Q. So again, just like with um, alkenes, the number before the substance, guys, the name, tells us the location of the triple bond. So ethine. Eth means? Nope. Two. So C2. Now it's H. Two times two is? Minus two is? C2, H2. So our structural formula. C, triple bond C. Now, where do you think the hydrogens are going to go here with the triple bond? Yeah, on the very ends. What shape would this be? Going way back now to shapes. Linear, right? It's just a line. A lot of times, guys, with um, triple bonded elements, they are going to be linear because you got that triple bond. Everything's on the opposite side, 180 degrees away. I want you to go through and try the last three here in your chart. Okay, benzene, have you guys ever heard of that before? Like in real life, it's dangerous stuff. Okay, benzene is not a good thing that we want to, you know, ingest or anything like that when we are, you know, as humans. Um, it's carcinogenic. So these are the two things you need to know, guys. The term aromatic means it's got a, it's got a um, hexagonal structure like this, all right? Um, where again, it's either or. Know these two names, benzene and toluene. Toluene is just methyl benzene, where you've got this methyl group hanging off right here. These are two common ones. Commit these to memory. You could be asked about those guys. If it's talking about aromatic, it's talking about benzene, the benzene family. So all along so far, we've talked about three different families, guys. They're homologous series. Homologous means what? What's homologous mean? Homo, that prefix homo means one, right? It's the same. So homologous, guys, alkane is a homologous series. Alkene is a homologous series. What's that? It's carbon and hydrogen, but it's dealing with that double or triple bond, okay? So alkane is a single bond series. Alkene would be a double bond, and then alkyne is that triple bond. This is another series. It's called the benzene series, where you can have this central structure of this hexagon um, um, piece, and then you can branch off and build off from there, okay? But these are the two most common, toluene and benzene. They're used a lot in industrial processes. Toluene actually has a um, sweeter type aroma to it. It's, it's in like spray paint and stuff. Not sweet, that's not the right, but it's in like spray paint, that smell with it. Um, that's, um, toluene is a, is a piece in there. That's as far as we're going to go this period, guys. We're going to come back next period and talk about functional groups.